And I'm Damon Wilson, president and CEO of the National Endowment for Democracy. And it is really my pleasure to welcome you both in person, those that we have here socially distanced, and to those who are joining us online to the Endowment's 2021 Democracy Award. I want to offer a special word of thanks to our friends at the Hereford Foundation who have generously contributed to support this event and for their longtime support for the endowment and its mission of supporting freedom around the world. For those that are on social media, you can follow along on Facebook and Twitter, and we encourage you to join the conversation throughout the evening using the hashtag DemAward and hashtag NEDDemocracy, any democracy. Democracy and freedom are under pressure around the world. News headlines are filled every day with tragic stories and setbacks from Afghanistan to Burma to Nicaragua. But here at the endowment, we have the privilege of working with those who have the courage, the determination, and the capability to change things. Grassroots civil society activists who will not be deterred. It is their stories which gives us optimism. It is their resilience which helps us see a pathway to democratic renewal, and it is their sacrifice which inspires us each and every day, and that's why we are gathered here today. This year's Democracy Award honors the work of four courageous civil society groups who are working to confront the crisis of democracy in a region so close to our own Central America, as we heard at the White House today, a region that is our home. These four outstanding organizations are representative of a larger effort at the grassroots in Nicaragua and Honduras, El Salvador, and Guatemala to address critical issues of governance, accountability, and human rights that are so fundamental to the struggle for democracy, justice, and human dignity in the region. Across Central America, democracy and its institutions are under duress as authoritarians and autocrats consolidate power <coughs> and further destabilize and impoverish citizens of the region. From co-opting of the judiciaries to full-fledged attacks on the political opposition and civic actors alike, proponents of democracy are increasingly worried about what the future holds for Central American democracy. In Nicaragua, seven presidential candidates and two dozen civil society leaders are behind bars or under house arrest as sham elections approach. In Honduras, multi-party elections are approaching, but they leave citizens with few honest uh, opinions and options at the polls. In Guatemala and El Salvador, civil society is loudly decrying closing civic space, threats to freedom of expression, and growing human rights violations, along with entrenched impunity for past abuses. Throughout the region, rule of law seems more the exception than the norm, and the political leader less tolerant of dissident voices. So governance and development opportunities for citizens continued to be stymied as crises strain the system. And any voice contesting the narrative of a ruling party or regime are often very unwelcome. And so it's in that context, that tough context, that the bravery, the commitment, the talent of the endowments partners who are with us today is truly to be celebrated. Often at great cost and personal risk, our partners in civil society and the independent media sector are working ceaselessly, ceaselessly to find and preserve opportunities for progress, to expose anti-democratic actions for their governments, and chart new paths and ideas for a more just future. Ultimately, the pathway to peace, security, prosperity, individual dignity is rooted in a strong civil society capable of exposing injustices and the nexus between corruption and organized crime, and holding governments and institutions accountable. And that's the story we're going to hear tonight. So to set, set the scene for our award presentations, which are gonna take place this evening at six o'clock, we're privileged to be hearing from a range of experts and officials who are deeply knowledgeable about the conditions, the challenges, and the opportunities facing the region and our honorees. The endowment, after all, is a leading center of democratic action and thought. And so we're, we're tapping into both of those traditions today with extraordinary activists, but also practitioners, academics, and strategists. We'll have two discussions, the first examining democracy and governance in Central America, defending civic space and independent media for democratic accountability. And a second discussion featuring our honorees to hear more from them about their work and what's at stake 
and the struggle for democracy in Central America. But before we get in our discussions, we are delighted to be joined to have with us the United States Principal Deputy Assistant Secretary of State for Western Hemisphere Affairs and the Special Envoy for the Northern Triangle, Ricardo Zuniga. Mr. Zuniga was Special Assistant to the President and Senior Director for Western Hemisphere Affairs at the National Security Council from 2012 to 2015. He has worked overseas in Mexico, Portugal, Cuba, Spain. He served in the State Department's Office of Cuban Affairs and in the U.S. Mission to the Organization for American Mistakes. And apropos for this evening, he was born in Tegucigalpa, Honduras. So thank you, Special Envoy Zuniga, for being with us. Let me invite you to the podium. Thank you very much, Damon. I'm just far enough to need my glasses, so I'll take care of that. First of all, thank you. Thank you so much uh, for that introduction and for the invitation to be here today. Uh, I, I was mentioning to Damon when I arrived uh, that we often cite the work of the NED as an example of what the United States can do, what we really can do to help people who are really working to preserve and advance democracy and, and institutionalism in their countries. Uh, we're very proud of uh, the National Endowment for Democracy. That's something where there's strong bipartisan support and that we need more than ever, because as you said, democracy is in a period of strain, not just around the world, but right here near our home. And I think it's important to cite that as well. We are, uh, we're working together in Central America. Let me get that. Okay. Usually I'm too loud, so I'm very glad to be. Uh, so we're we're really honored to be here uh, with the with the Ned to cite the tremendous work of the four organizations that I had an opportunity and the privilege to be meeting with now, and uh, some of whom are old friends from other work in Central America. As you said. These are examples of resilience and work, positive work on behalf of their countries under very difficult circumstances. The United States has never been more closely linked to Central America than we are today. We have strong cultural ties, vibrant trading relationships, uh, and strong family connections between every country in Central America and the United States today. The people of Central America have enriched American life with energy and determination and contributed to our success as a country. At the same time, societies in Central America are struggling to overcome generations of inherited structural problems such as pervasive inequality uh, and impunity for past abuses. Lack of judicial independence, something we just had an opportunity to discuss uh, with our visitors, enables corruption, undermines the rule of law, and discourages economic investment. As we recognize the essential work done by today's award winners, I think it's appropriate to reflect on why their work is so important, why we need to look no further uh, than uh, the situation in Nicaragua to understand that the suppression of democracy leads to social and economic disaster. Authoritarian governments cannot deliver stability and prosperity. That's a fantasy uh, that continues to be told and sold by populist and hybrid governments around the world. And unfortunately, this is something that we are seeing very much in Central America. If Nicaragua is the destination, unfortunately, there are elements of movement in that direction in other parts of Central America as well, particularly as it relates to the relationship between governments, civil society, governments, and the free press. The fact that today at the OAS, 26 countries in the Americas voted in favor of a resolution condemning the direction of events in Nicaragua ahead of elections that are, lack any credibility uh, as representing the will of the people, should inform us that there is at least an understanding of the dangers for the rest of the region if they follow that model. Unfortunately, the Ortega Murillo regime in Nicaragua is not alone in perpetuating the belief that authoritarianism presents a viable option for the people of the Americas. The work done by the Colectivo de Derechos Humanos Nicaragua Nunca Más to preserve historical memory and seek justice for victims of the state-led violence 
unleashed by Ortega and Murillo in 2018 is just and necessary. The dedication of Gonzalo and Wendy and the rest of the organization has been critical to promoting and protecting the rights of human rights abuse victims. Unfortunately, as I said, as we look around the region, we see too many examples of government officials seeking to place their own interests above those of their citizens. Threats to judicial independence in El Salvador and Guatemala demonstrate the attempts of some individuals to shield themselves and their associates from accountability. Thanks to the work of transparency organizations and independent investigative media, these leaders and other individuals cannot hide in the shadows. In just five years, Tracoda has established a firm reputation in El Salvador for their advocacy for increased transparency and access to public information. Carlos and Diego have ensured that Tracoda creates pipelines for future leaders to continue pushing for oversight of government actions and promoting citizen advocacy that's at the core of democracy everywhere. Likewise, in Honduras, Contra Corriente has exemplified the tenacity and endurance needed to shine a light on corruption and hold officials to account. Jennifer and Catherine have increased attention to gender-based violence, the dynamics of migration, and LGBTQI issues in Honduras, and in so doing, have strengthened protections for vulnerable, vulnerable groups. In Guatemala, Helen and Lisette and their colleagues in the Myrna Mac Foundation have advocated for transparency and accountability and fought to ensure the voices of all citizens are heard. The Biden-Harris administration has prioritized strengthen, strengthening of democratic institutions and good governance across Central America. As part of our comprehensive strategy to address the root causes of migration, the United States is working with civil society, the private sector, governments, and other partners across the region to address the serious governance concerns that continue to limit Central Americans from fully exercising their rights as citizens. Too often, corruption, weak governance, disinformation, and impunity undercut human and civil rights and fuel the potential of authoritarianism to spread to other parts of the region. And that threat is very real. Your four organizations are a bright light exposing injustice, inequality, corruption, and impunity. As Justice Brandeis wrote in 1913, if the broad light of day could be let in upon men's actions, it would purify them as the sun disinfects. And your organizations showcase just some of the great work being done in Central America and the commitment of Central Americans to build a brighter future for themselves and their children. That is true resilience. I'll finish by sharing what Vice President Harris said just a few months ago. Our administration firmly believes in the potential of the region and the power of the region. Latin Americans are shaping their own future and writing their own story. You hold the pen. Thank you very much.